In March 2010, members of a European project called COSAFE gathered in Iceland. They heard scientists voice concerns about renewed seismic activity detected beneath one of the country's glaciers. Within a day, their worst fears were realised. At that moment, that night, I think we all knew we were in the middle of something big. Residents and livestock in the vicinity of the volcano had been swiftly moved out of danger. But the plume of ash, billowing thousands of metres into the air, was to turn this unexpected turn of events into a crisis of international proportions. That this eruption would put a stop to aviation in Europe, none of us had thought that that would be possible. Country after country was forced to ground aircraft. Flights were cancelled, millions of passengers left stranded and airlines incurred massive losses, estimated at more than two billion pounds, nearly three billion euros. While the disruption couldn't be avoided, Iceland's membership of a unique European partnership called COSAFE meant that information on a constantly changing situation could be quickly and effectively exchanged through a network of professionals trying to manage the crisis. Many of the ideas for improving crisis management have come from COSAFE's regular workshops held in partner countries over the course of the project's three years. These have helped to create a variety of documents and websites designed to make it simple to share expertise and to improve and coordinate disaster management procedures. The booklets will live at least 10 years. Also the videos and websites. But the training courses, I think this is the start point for the different kind of training courses. It's very practical information included. Exercises like this simulated bus crash have also been a vital source of new ideas for improving accident response times in remote areas. COSAFE has designed a new computer program called Guide that can use the internet and web maps to quickly locate key resources and equipment in a specified area surrounding the scene of an accident. So we can just draw a circle around, where, just around the place where the disaster has happened and find where are the storage of the equipment that we want to have. And that is a way to shorten the time until it's coming to the scene. This program is available for anyone. It's based on the Google map. So you can go over and use it in Scotland or in Finland or in Iceland, whatever you want. For all rescuers in remote areas, extreme weather and difficult terrain are a constant hazard. It's crucial that those responding to emergencies are adequately protected, and COSAFE has pioneered detailed research into the thermal and insulating qualities of the clothing worn by workers in the field. The training of the people who would be responding to disasters in the rural areas is as important as in urban areas and even more important because in the rural areas we are facing these things very rarely, much rarer than in the urban areas. So we need to train, we need to train much more regularly. Which is why the importance of the COSAFE project cannot be underestimated. A multi-million pound project that's delivered vital improvements to disaster management and whose contribution to safety in Northern Europe's remote areas will live on for years to come. I think COSAFE has achieved uh, things in two particular areas. If you take the broader spectrum, then there's the cooperation and coordination of the people from different countries. And the second part is on the fact that we have produced products and services for the safety of people in isolated and remote areas. Those two things, cooperation and safety, are to be found in the name COSAFE. And that, I think, is the legacy uh, that we would like to leave. <laughs>